Then I saw in my dream that the two of them went along together very lovingly toward one another, and enjoyed a delightful conversation about all the things that had happened to them in their pilgrimage. Christian began in this way. My honored and deeply loved brother, faithful, I am glad that I have caught up with you and that God has so strengthened our spirits that we can walk as companions in this so pleasant a path. Faithful looked over at Christian as they walked. Dear friend, I had thought of enjoying your company even from our town, but you did get quite a start ahead of me. Because of that, I was forced to come this far on my own. How long did you stay in the city of destruction before you set out after me on your pilgrimage? Till I could stay no longer, Faithful admitted. After you left, there was a lot of talk about how our city would be burned to the ground with fire from heaven in a short time. Is that right? Did your neighbors really talk like this? Faithful nodded. Yes, for a while it's what everybody talked about. At least for a while. A slight frown creased Christian's brow. Did no one else but you come away from destruction to escape the danger? Faithful shrugged with his hand, palm up, and let it fall to his side in resignation. Like I said, there was a lot of talk going on, but I don't think they really believed it. In the heat of conversation, I heard some of them ridicule you. They even talked about your pilgrimage like they disapproved of it. In fact, they described it as a desperate journey. However, I believed, and still do, that the end of our city will be with fire and brimstone from above. And as a result, I decided to make my escape. Did you hear anyone talk about neighbor Pliable? Yes, Christian. I heard that he followed you until he came to the Slough of Despond, where some said he fell in. He wouldn't say anything about it, but I'm sure he was thoroughly covered with the foul dirt of that place. And what did the neighbors say to him? Since he returned, he has been the subject of considerable derision from all sorts of people. Some mock and despise him, and hardly anyone will give him work. He is seven times worse off now than if he had never left the city in the first place. The news troubled Christian. But why are they so set against him, especially since they also despise the way he abandoned Faithful's lips thin to a straight line. They say things like, Hang him! He's a turncoat! He wasn't true to his profession. I think God has stirred them up to hiss and jeer at him, and make a proverb of him because he hath forsaken the way. Scripture And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will give them over as a reproach to all the kingdoms of the earth, as a curse and as an astonishment, and a hissing and an affront unto all the Gentiles where I have driven them, because they did not hearken unto my words, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my slaves, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But you did not hear, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 29, verses 18 and 19. Did you have a chance to talk with him before you left? I saw him once in the streets, Faithful said, but he stayed to the other side of the street like he was ashamed of what he had done. So I didn't really speak to him. Christian glanced down at the ground. I have to say, when I first set out, I had hopes for him. He looked back at Faithful with sadness in his eyes. But now I'm afraid he will perish in the overthrow of the city. For it has happened to him, just as the proverb says, The dog returns to his vomit, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mud. Second Peter 2, verse 22 Faithful nodded. I agree. I have the same fears for him. But who can hinder that which will be?